Rector Sadovnici, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a distinct honor and a privilege for me to greet the 6th International Scientific Congress, Globalistics 2020, Global Problems and the Future of Humanity. At the outset, allow me to thank the organizers of the Congress, particularly Lomonosov Moscow State University and its Faculty for Global Processes, the Russian Academy of Sciences, Moscow State Institute for International Relations, my alma mater, the Commission of the Russian Federation for UNESCO, and the partners of the Congress, UNESCO, the World Academy of Art and Science, of which I have the privilege of being a fellow, the Club of Rome, and the United Nations of Geneva, which I have the honor to represent today. This year, the Congress meets in unusual circumstances due to COVID-19, preceding uh, precluding us from personal interaction and from enjoying the usually beautiful weather in Moscow in May. Проведение шестого конгресса совпадает с рядом знаменательных юбилеев. В этом году исполняется 265 лет со дня основания Московского государственного университета имени Ломоносова. В личном плане хотел бы отметить, что МГУ в нашей семье всегда был на особом счету. В год 200-летия МГУ, в 1955 году, выпускником его юридического факультета был Александр Чекваидзе, мой отец, ныне покойный. В скором времени мы будем отмечать 75-летие ООН и чуть позже ЮНЕСКО. Всемирная Академия Искусства и Науки исполняется 60 лет, а Римскому клубу 50. Вот уже 15 лет, как Конгресс проводится на базе факультета глобальных процессов МГУ. Ну и самому молодому кафедре ЮНЕСКО при факультете глобальных процессов исполнится 10 лет. Last year we marked the 100th anniversary of uh, modern multilateralism, tra tracing its lineage from the League of Nations and the Versailles Treaty of 1919. And this year, as I mentioned, we mark the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. This is reason to look back with satisfaction. Extraordinary advancements have been made in peace, rights, and well-being over the past century. However, two decades into the 21st century, we find ourselves facing increasingly complex challenges. A climate crisis wreaking havoc around the world, armed conflicts threatening millions, dire poverty in large parts of the world, refugee flows at record levels, rampant inequality both between and within countries, escalating disputes over trade, sky-high debt, threats to the rule of law, the methodical and deliberate dismantling of disarmament commitments, attacks on the media and civil society, and much more. We're also seeing increasingly militaristic rhetoric and activities, growth in nationalistic and isolationist politics of fear and resentment, and the burgeoning role of technology in the private sector, particularly social media, in international relations. To say that we are, uh, the world is in transition would be a gross understatement. What we're living today is not a routine changing environment, rather a pivotal moment which only occurs maybe every other century. A new social and economic paradigm is emerging, and we all need to join forces to ensure that these changes have positive impact on all. The dramatic and fast-evolving human, social, and economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic only strengthens further this point. At the start of 2020, who could have imagined that a disease outbreak could turn the world upside down in such a short time and in such a dramatic way? Global challenges of such magnitude require concerted collective responses. Yet, as Secretary General Antonio Guterres recently observed, multilateralism is under fire precisely when we need it. In the watershed moment for hum humankind, that is 2020, what we need is to develop a more modern multilateralism, one that is more inclusive and collaborative. Similarly, leadership in the 21st century must come from all quarters and all levels. Gone is the time for a handful of leaders and small groups of countries to make decisions for everyone. Conveniently, there are no such leaders around anyway. 
This is precisely what the 15-month project entitled Global Leadership in the 21st Century, launched last year by the World Academy of Art and Science in collaboration with us at the United Nations Office of Geneva, is aimed at. The project, which I'm proud to showcase both as a UN official and a fellow of the Academy, aims to identify ways to consciously foster and accelerate the development of leadership so urgently needed to address the challenges and tap the opportunities for global progress in the 21st century. Global challenges are also global opportunities, and they can only be addressed collectively. This reality is reflected in the policy frameworks of 2015. Ironically, the same governments that are drawing further and further apart on the vital security, economic, and social issues today found it possible to come together in 2015 to reach agreements of truly historic proportions, the Paris Accords, financing for development, and the 2030 Agenda. This gives a unique chance to shape a new governance landscape, and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is our common roadmap. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the verge of blundering into something far more devastating than the world has ex experienced before. We should pull back from the precipice before it is too late. Thank you very much, and I wish the Congress intellectual creativity and heated debates.